Hello and welcome to this lesson on understanding and optimizing customer data sets. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on the Google Merchandise Store's customer data set. This data set contains information about the session history of each user on the GStore's website along with the generated revenue in case they ever made a purchase. So, our goal with this lesson is to learn what kind of data we should be collecting for our own business in order to properly apply business analytics and intelligence. And since most of the data fields present in this dataset is based off of Google Analytics along with some internal transactional data, any business can apply the techniques taught in this course to harvest and optimize such datasets. So the dataset contains the following information and we have the data dictionary over here. So you can pause this lesson and have a good look at all of the different columns and what they mean in this data dictionary. But for now, let's move ahead. So let us start this lesson by importing the necessary libraries. And for this lesson, we'll only need the pandas library. So we're importing pandas as pd to work with data frames. I'll run this line of code and make the import happen. Next, let's import the CSV file called gstore-data.csv, which contains information about each user's website visit along with the revenue that generated for Google. So for this, I'm calling the read underscore CSV method off of the pandas library and I'm specifying the file path as data slash gstore underscore data dot CSV since our CSV file is within the data folder. And I'm also specifying the parameter low memory as false since some of the columns in this data set have mixed data types. So once this CSV file has been read in as a data frame, we're storing it in the variable store underscore df. So I'll run this line of code and make this assignment happen. Great. Now that the data frame has been read in, let us look at the first five rows by calling the head method off of the data frame. So I'll run this and we have our data set over here. So here we have the first five rows and we have a bunch of columns. So pandas is limiting the number of columns that we can see right now. So let us look at the entire shape of the data frame. So for this, we can call the shape property off of the data frame. So if I run this, we can see that there are about 900,000 different user sessions recorded on the GStore's website in this data set. And there are 55 different columns which are given by the column headings over here. So since this data set is large, let us see how much memory it occupies since the theme of this whole entire lesson is to optimize this data set. And we'll also be learning how you can optimize your own data sets by following along with this lesson. So to look at the memory users, I'm calling the info method off of the data frame and I'm specifying the parameter memory users as deep. So if I run this, we have the entire column names over here along with the non-null count, which is the values which are not null and the data type. So you can see that most of the columns over here are of an object data type and some have specific data types such as in64, boolean, float64 and that's it. So if we look at the memory users over here, we can see that this data frame is currently occupying 2.6 gigabytes of memory, which is quite large. So now the question becomes, should we remove the rows or should we remove the columns in order to reduce this memory uses? So let us talk about both of them. So first, should we remove the rows that is the session history in order to reduce memory uses? So we should keep in mind that session history is very important for profiling the customers of a business along with the behavioral patterns. Therefore, even if the data set fills large, we should not remove the rows in the data set as long as possible. Alternatively, we can take a sample out of the data set that is most representative of the entire data set in order to conduct our analysis. This is what most statisticians do. But since we'll be performing machine learning later on in this course, let us keep all the rows of data for our analysis, since machine learning algorithms need a large number of data points. Now, should we remove the column, which is the data fields, in order to reduce memory uses? 
So the removal of a column is completely dependent on the data it holds. If a column doesn't contain data that is significant to analysis or modeling, then it can be removed. Examples of such columns are columns containing mostly null values, a single constant value, or a randomly generated value. So first, let us print out all of the column names in the data set to look at the columns. So here we have channel grouping as the first column in the data frame and traffic source dot campaign code as our last column in the data frame. Now we can select any of the column and print out the unique values in it by using the and unique method. So here I'm selecting the channel grouping column from our data frame and I'm calling the and unique method by specifying the parameter drop na equals to false which means that we want to keep the null values in this column. So if I run this, we get the output as eight. So there are eight different unique values in this column, which is channel grouping. So we can also print out the unique values for all the columns at once. And for this, we can just call the and unique method off of the data frame itself. So if I run this, we can see that we have the column names and the number of unique values they hold on the right side. We can see that there are a lot of columns containing only a single value. So let us phase them out programmatically by appending them into an empty list. So I'm creating an empty list over here, which is called single underscore val underscore calls. Then I'm looping across all of the column names by writing for x in store underscore df dot columns. So each time this loop runs, the column name will be assigned in the variable x. Then I'm checking if store underscore df x, which is the selected columns, number of unique elements, which is given by the and unique method is equals to one or not. So if it equals one, then we're appending the column name to our empty list over here. So I'll run this and let's wait a while. Okay. Now, if we look at the variable, which is single underscore val underscore calls, we have a list of all of the column names containing only a single unique element. So these columns may contain some kind of data value. However, the information in them is non-existent since they do not help to distinguish one user session history from the other. So let us remove them using the drop method off of the data frame. So I'm calling the drop method from the data frame and I'm specifying the list of columns to drop as our variable, which is single underscore val underscore calls. And I'm specifying the axis as one since we are trying to drop the columns. Then I'm specifying the parameter in place equals to true since I want to reflect this change in our original data frame, which is store underscore df. So I'll run this. And if we look at the first five rows again, we can see that there are 36 columns now. Also, if we look over here, we have some ID columns. So even if full visitor ID and visit ID have been generated for this session history, they are actually being assigned to the user itself. But the session ID over here is randomly generated. And this means that we can drop it as well, since this does not provide any information to us. So, for that, I'm calling the drop method again and I'm passing in the column name as session ID, the axis as once since we're dropping the column and we're putting in place as true. So I'll run this and we have dropped the session ID. So let us check again if we left out any column that doesn't add value to us. So I'm calling the and unique method for finding the unique elements in the data frame, which is store underscore df. So I'll run this. And as you can see, now we have a reduced number of columns with all of the unique data values being more than one. So looks like all of the columns are useful. Now, finally, let us check the memory users again. So I'm calling the info method off of the data frame and I'm specifying the memory users as deep. So I'll run this and we can see the memory users is 1.2 ZB. And that's a huge improvement since we started at 2.6 gigabytes. 
So looking at the data fields, we can also see that the data set can be grouped into various categories such as session visit information, which is given by these data fields over here. Also, we have the device information given by these data fields. We have geographical information given by geo network data fields. We have the aggregated information given by totals data field and we have the traffic source information given by the traffic source data fields. So these will be our features for predicting the revenue information which is given by the column name totals.transactional revenue which is over here. So finally let us export this optimized data frame to a new CSV file so that we can use it in further lessons. For that I'm calling the two underscore CSV method off of our data frame and I'm specifying the file path as data slash and the file name which is optimized underscore gstore underscore data dot csv and i'm specifying the header which is the column names to be present in this data set but the index to be dropped so that is it for this lesson and i'll run this line of code to make the export happen so as an exercise i would like to encourage you to look at the content of each column by selecting them from the optimized data frame one by one next Create a note of how valuable the columns may be in order to predict the revenue generated per customer. This will help you to further understand the data set and prepare yourself for the upcoming lessons.